I guess Destiny went on Tim Pool's show. Did he go in studio? Good for him. He has no. He has no family. No. No fear of COVID. No fear of COVID. Um, so Destiny was on uh, Tim Pool's show, and um, I, I saw a bunch of clips, and you know, Tim was having a little bit of a tough time. I think with Destiny a little bit. Um, this guy's real name is Stephen Bunnell, and he is um, he's a Twitch uh, streamer. I've been on a, a show with him, but I don't know if it was his show or it was like a, he had another podcast or something. But um, here he is. Tim Pool is trying to argue that what Trump is doing is completely normal, completely normal. There was a whole lot of the Hillary can still win stuff. And Hillary the, conceded the next day. But it's absolutely not even remotely similar. Uh, it, it's remotely similar. Not I would say it's maybe not, like it's the, not the way that thing. Antarctica is remotely close to like Pluto. Do you see the videos of celebrities saying the Electoral College must vote for Hillary Clinton? Do you think there's a difference? Well, I'm between, sorry, they didn't say that. They do you said, think there's a difference between celebrities saying something and the president of the United States trying to undermine the election? <laughs> that's why I'm saying under, these aren't undermine? remotely similar. Yes, undermine. See, that's 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 framing. Well, it's <laughs> when you say so. Legally in 2016, challenged. Trump said millions of illegals voted. He asserted that with no evidence. That's undermining the integrity of our election. And then in 2020, he's saying that there was widespread election fraud that literally no agency, no other credible person has backed up save for the melting head of Giuliani. Like no one else is backing <laughs> up on this. His own DHS turned on him on this with his own appointee. Um, his own attorney general, the sword and shield. What did he say? Barr came out and said that as of right now, there is no evidence of widespread election fraud. Um, wait, wait, there's more to that quote. Wait, wait, uh, wait, wait, wait. The more to that quote was enough to overturn the results of any election. Right. And there was actually no evidence of any election fraud. Uh, they just keep saying no evidence of widespread election fraud just to, to cover themselves in the event that somebody finds election fraud. But no, there's been no evidence now five weeks out of election fraud. But I love how the fact that like pool is like you're using an adjective to describe what uh, Trump is doing. And that's not right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just nitpicking just one thing because look, Destiny, uh, I guess that's his name right there. I didn't know. Uh, I was unfamiliar with who that is because I'm old at heart, but um, did a really good job there. But it, and, but it, it's, it's, it shows how refreshing it is when you actually get a right winger to have a dialogue one-on-one -on -one with these fact patterns, because it's so overwhelming that all pool can do is just pick a tiny crumb off of this cake of an argument and say, see here? No, no, no. Like you're ignoring everything else. And it, it it's so glaring. Yeah. He was like, Pluto. I'm not sure if that's still a planet. <laughs> um, and <laughs> yeah, uh, Antarctica. Like, yeah, he's, uh, it, it's fun. I love, I love watching these guys go one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and yeah, I, let's just be honest though. It is, this week has been that week where the page, I think, has turned. And it's all just, I think it's just fun from here on out. Because DHS coming out against election fraud was huge. That's how the week began. And now we just get to keep watching these crazies eat themselves alive. And I, I'm here for it. I'm here for every last maggoteer. And I'm excited. You know what? I, I, I have to say... You have a situation where this is a this is a genuine twofer because the stakes of this are actually really huge, right? I mean, this is all about Georgia at this point. And there is a there is there's there's sort of like three incentive structures here, right? You have um the incentive structure of the of the Republican politician to create enough aggrievement amongst their voters in Georgia to come out. Then you have the incentive structure of of Donald Trump to push that aggrievement beyond them coming out for an election, bypassing the election and just coming out to support whatever, you know, sort of like fundraising endeavor he has or post presidency uh, project. And then you have like people like Tim or Ruben who have this incentive tr structure that is sort of like probably more aligned with Trump because that's where their cash is right. than actually winning in Georgia, but yeah. they still have to pay lip service to it in a way that, that Trump doesn't. And that's why you're getting like Michelle Malkin saying that Dan Crenshaw is a globalist. And uh, earlier I looked at Dave Rubin's uh, YouTube numbers and his views are very healthy lately. 
Oh, there's no, I mean, there's has to be people watching him. I just don't know who it is. Right. Um, and, and this is, and so, and then, so you get to watch the, them eat themselves, but it's also for a really important cause, which is the opportunity to get like, you know, maybe a major reconciliation bill where right. there's some massive government spending. Yeah at the beginning of the year. Right. So the stakes are incredibly high, even as it, it, it is like I the thing that makes me nervous is as entertained as we are by the flailing and the failed attempts to thread the needle of, you know, still being supportive of Trump's conspiracy theories while also trying to galvanize su- support in Georgia is that I, I don't want to actually make the mistake that I, I think a lot of leftists have made in the past where we think Republicans are going to eat themselves alive and they're going to I still fail, think that, and then and then they end up showing up anyway. Yeah, I think that I, I think still the likelihood is that Democrats don't win both of those elections. Maybe they win one. I'm maybe not sure. Not win. Maybe, maybe, but um, right. But the attack we, ads are insane, right? That are running constantly against uh, Warnock and and Ossoff, but. There has, I mean, look at the ground game, I think, in November, and I I think it'll be really tough, but that is incredibly mobilizing to see that Georgia went blue. That means a lot for the grassroots and traditionally marginalized communities, black and brown communities. So, yeah, it'll be a fight, um, but it's not being won by Pelosi. You know, Pelosi is, as you guys were talking about earlier, uh, is not the the rhetoric is not being seized by Democratic leadership to say, we have a chance to really deliver for the American people to help them out in this crisis. Um, Cause again, a vaccine, come on, you think essential workers, I think I, I just thinking about the idea that essential workers are actually going to get the vaccine first. No, it's going to be Taylor Swift and people who like want to go to Taylor Swift concerts. <laughs> I don't know why I'm picking on her, but you know what I'm saying? It's going to be, it's going to flow the exact same way. And I'm sorry to say this, it's going to flow similarly to the ways that testing has flowed, which is if you can pay for it, you get a quick rapid test. And if you can't. Without a doubt. Yeah. I, right. I, I seven, wish it were different, but yeah. Uh, there's 17,000 doses that are coming into New York uh, city. I think by mid December, those are going to go to hospital workers. And after that, it's just going to be, it's just going to be like, how much can you pay your doctor? Right. And, yeah. and, and that's how you're going to have the availability. That's th- without a doubt, I think. And that's who's going to get it in the first, like, you know, three months or I so. I mean, that's just the American healthcare system in a nutshell. Um, I, 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 it's, it is going to be fascinating, though, to see what happens with this, with this race. And, and you're right. There's only, there's only so much. They don't want to nationalize the election, right? Because, but. If Pelosi's message, just the idea that Pelosi's messaging is different from Porter's is enough to sort of like muddy the waters. Like where where is like, if the vaccine is coming, then it doesn't matter who controls the Senate. If Joe Biden's president, then it doesn't matter who controls the Senate. I mean, that's what we're hearing. She's saying there's no, the, the urgency has lessened. And that's exactly the opposite of what you need. Right. It's just, it's, I, I'm, I'm just, are, are people going to come out? If she came out and said it is desperately urgent that Mitch McConnell not control the Senate because we're not going to get the, uh, the, the, the support for Americans we need. Are people in Georgia going to come out and go like, wait a second. I don't want there to be a situation where we actually get the assistance that we need. Yeah. We need to, we need to vote for the guy who's stopping it. It's just, I, 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 I'm, I'm just. I can't believe it. Um, all right. One more Tim Pool um, video. 